At long last, Capcom has revealed the Resident Evil 4 remake. It was just formally announced. Now, there's a, a number of people out there that uh, probably didn't know that this was an actual thing. Um, of course, Capcom had been rumored to have been uh, having this project uh, in development for a, for a while now, for about maybe two years maybe longer. They delayed it actually well over a year um, due to the, uh, the backlash against the Resident Evil 3 remake. And that leads me into this video. You know, because anyone can make a video, you know, a reaction video. Oh my god, I'm so excited about the Resident Evil 4 remake. Yeah, we're all looking forward to the game, right? But let, let's get to some genuine discussion. Has Capcom actually learned their lesson? Did they actually learn from their mistake with Resident Evil 3? That's what I want to talk about. But first, before I get into that, let's let's take a look at the trailer and see, you know, what we have. And I like that too, you know, they already come up with the, you know, they already showed the release date, 24th of March of next year. So that's great. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about this, uh, that intro right there. I felt that was pretty unnecessary. I think it's, uh, funny that they didn't really show Leon's face. I think they're, uh, they're slightly altering his look. Uh, so some, some people may, uh, may not be a fan of what they come up with, but I'm very curious because I still remember when they first revealed, um, the, the redesign of Joe Valentine for the Resident Evil 3 remake, and uh, there were some detractors, you know. Not everyone was a fan of that redesign. Ultimately, I felt it won me over personally, but you did have some uh, naysayers out there. So uh, I, I think they just wanted to use this trailer to get everyone excited. They don't want any negative publicity whatsoever, you know, with the debut trailer. You know, they'll, they'll eventually reveal his look and, and what have you. So, um, that's, uh, that's one thing that I'm very curious about with this game. How close is it actually going to be to the original Resident Evil 4? Because again, as I stated at the beginning of this video, Capcom had delayed this project over a year. This was supposed to already have been announced uh, a long time ago. I'd imagine they were planning for 2022 uh, release with this game, uh, but they pushed it back. And the major reason for that is because Capcom couldn't decide, you know, did they actually want to make a game that was closer to the original, or did they want to make something that branched off from the original? And so there was a, there was a clash, you know, an internal clash. I actually made a video about that when that uh, tidbit of news actually came out. And again, this was well over a year ago. I'm wondering, you know, what this remake is actually going to be. Is it, is it going to line up more with the original? Or is it going to branch out more? As per usual, I think um, with these remakes, you know, just judging off the Resident Evil 2 and the Resident Evil 3 remakes, um, both games do differ um, quite a bit from, you know, their original. Although Resident Although Resident Evil 2 was closer to the original game um, in comparison to Resident Evil 3, uh, which had the spirit of the original, but it was different in a number of ways. With Resident Evil 4, it's going to be more difficult for Capcom to strike a balance because, for one, you got to incorporate the action elements, you know, so you got to satisfy the um, that side of the audience, the game's audience that uh, preferred the action. The action side but they can't play into that side too much because ultimately that's also what led Resident Evil the the series itself down the wrong path Resident Evil 4 within of itself is the double-edged sword of the series you know on one hand it revitalized the series and it breathed new life into the franchise and it was this big revolutionary thing when it originally came out but at the same time, the changes it brought to the franchise ultimately ended up hurting it in the long run. But because this is a remake, you know, they have to incorporate the, those action elements. So I'm very curious as to how they're going to do that. Which design choices did they actually make? 
One thing I feel that they absolutely should should have changed from the original is the Ashley character, uh, which is the president's daughter that Leon is um, sent to um, rescue. Uh, this character was horrible in the original. She was terrible, and then they um, they had gameplay sections where they forced you to play as uh, this character, and she couldn't attack. You you couldn't really hide from the enemies or anything. Her gameplay segments were were extremely short, and they were extremely scripted. But somehow they were very half-ass, just lazy across the board. They just seemed like an afterthought. So. I'm wondering how they're going to actually address that for uh, this remake. If they're going to force players to play as Ashley, I don't see them giving her a gun or anything of that nature. Because if the character can handle herself, then what the hell does she need Leon for in the first place? She could just rescue herself. But at the same time, if you know they do incorporate gameplay segments with Ashley, where the player is playing as uh, this character... They need to do a much better job at actually making it entertaining. Uh, they could play up on the horror atmosphere, you know, aspect of it more. Or the other decision, you know, the other choice is that, uh, you know, they could have chosen um, for the player to skip playing as Ashley altogether. And honestly, if they did that, then I have no complaints. Now, I, I'm assuming... I'm not exactly sure, but I'm assuming that is Ada Wong right there. Um, it kind of matches her her hair color and her jacket, you know, her red attire. So they probably could have changed her um, her appearance to where she's not wearing the, the red dress that she normally wears. You know, that's another aspect um, that I'm curious about. Uh, Ada had a small gameplay section in uh, Resident Evil 2, the remake. I'm wondering if, you know, she's going to have another gameplay segment in um, the remake before. I'd say there's a good chance um, that we'll probably see something like that. Now, something I think they did a really good job with regarding this trailer is not showing any of the enemies. Um, they want to save all that for you know, a later, a later time for like a, a gameplay reveal. I think that was very wise. Um, this is just the, uh, the debut trailer, uh, but they're avoiding any, you know, showing players the, the actual action itself. Another thing that I'm curious about is the, uh, the Napoleon character. For those who have played Resident Evil 4, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, Ramon Salazar. Um, I'm wondering what they did with that character. Did they completely revamp him? Did they give him a new look? Or is he more in line with his appearance from, you know, the original Resident Evil 4? I'm very curious, uh, you know, what they, what they actually did with that character. Because judging from the tone of, the, of this trailer... It appears that they're going for more of, um, you know, more of a gritty, realistic vibe. And the thing about Resident Evil 4 is that it wasn't gritty at all. Um, it was, it was actually a pretty silly game, tonally. It wasn't a game that was particularly written well. There was a lot of stupid shit in Resident Evil 4. Um, the dialogue in particular just was horrible in that game. It was pretty bad, so... I'm wondering, you know, are they going to go for more of a comedic tone like what they did with the original? Or is it going to be more in line with the remakes to where it's, they're actually trying to take it a little serious, you know, a bit more serious? I think it's going to be the, the latter rather than the former. Which, I, again, if they do that, I think it'll be a wise change from the original. So we got uh, another glimpse right there. Yeah, we got another glimpse right here of uh, Ada Wong. Um, clearly, they, um, they're blocking out her face, so you know, they're not trying to show off any of the, uh, either of the major characters in this game. They did the same with Leon. And uh, clearly, they changed her attire, 
which isn't surprising because they did the same thing for uh, Claire Redfield and um, and Jill Valentine for the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes. The design is less sex appeal and more, I guess, more tactical. You know, looking at this attire, I get more of the um, I get more of the secret covert agent vibe that uh, you know Ada Wong is supposed to give off. Again, I think that was a that was a nice change that they did personally. And I like the fact that they're keeping the uh, the logo very similar, the uh, the art decal here, very uh, similar to the ones with uh, Resident Evil 2 and 3. They're trying to line them up, so uh, I like what they did there. What happened that night? The pain. It has to. So I think there will be more dialogue with Leon you know, in regards to, um, you know, the events of what happened to Raccoon City in Resident Evil 2. And it sounds like they're bringing back the same uh, voice actor um, who did the voice of Leon for the Resident Evil 2 remake. And um, they're just bringing him back here for the remake to uh, to 4. If that's the case, I'm wondering how um, how people are going to feel about that. How the fan base is going to feel about that because you know the reason they changed Leon with the remake to two you know his voice is because he, you know that was a, a younger um, incarnation of the character but with Resident Evil 4 you know this takes place a few years after uh, the events of Resident Evil 2 so I would think they would try and you know match his voice up with um, whoever normally vo voices him and um, the characters you know all the various appearances uh, that the character has made in the franchise. But it doesn't sound like that's what they're doing here. Sounds like they're going with the same person from uh, the remake, the two. In any case, um, I think it looks great what they showed off thus far, um, which isn't much of anything, but you know, just seeing some of the imagery, the tonal updates to the game, uh, the updates to some of the, you know, the attire of the, of the characters, uh, the updates to, you know, graphically. This is a huge graphical leap over the original Resident Evil 4, which by all means is um, a very outdated game at this point. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, Capcom has to show, but going back to my original question, you know, have they actually learned their lesson with the Resident Evil 4 remake, you know, from what they did with Resident Evil 3? I think so. Um, I think this is going to be more in line with the original in terms of content. Uh, Resident Evil 4 is actually one of the longest games, one of the longest Resident Evil games. I think it's around 15 hours long. And usually the games are much shorter than that. Um, I think it's going to be uh, much longer than the uh, Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes, um, just going off of, you know, what the original game was. As far as, uh, again, tonally speaking, I think this game is going to be very different from the original Resident Evil 4. I think it's going to be more gritty. There's going to be less jokes in it. Uh, the dialogue, I think it's going to be much improved. And gameplay-wise, this is definitely going to be more in line of what you know Capcom did with the remakes, the 2 and 3. I'm just curious as to how they're actually going to handle certain things. Uh, particularly regarding like the the melee combat mechanics I'm curious as to how they're going to handle that and I think you know with the the combat mechanics I don't think they're gonna remove it entirely obviously because then it wouldn't be Resident Evil 4 anymore but at the same time I don't think that's really going to be a driving force of the of the gameplay itself they may uh, put a limit on uh, you know how much you can actually use Leon's uh, roundhouse kick for example which could actually work depending on you know the way that they decide to go with it i'm also curious as to how they're going to handle like the merchant and the uh the item box as far as you know the upgrade system goes are those things going to be more in line with the original the same way resident evil village for example took inspiration from resident evil 4 you know is it going to be similar to that or is it going to be more in line with um the remakes, the two and three. I think it's going to be more in line with the original personally, but it's impossible to tell at this point until they actually show gameplay.
all in all, um, I think this was a, a very good debut trailer and um, overall a great announcement from Capcom. Now, if only they could actually announce the, the damn DLC for Resident Evil Village and then we'll come full circle. Also, I'm wondering, is this going to be the final remake uh, for these Resident Evil games? Because they could still do Code Veronica. They could still do a remake to Resident Evil 1. And if they're really crazy, if they're really batshit, they could even do a remake to 5. But I don't think they're going to do a remake to Resident Evil 5. I think they're going to leave 5 and 6 alone. Probably as they should. There's not really any benefit in remaking 5 and 6. But as far as uh, Code Veronica and uh, Resident Evil 1, um, I think that's still on the table. But yeah, looking forward to the game.